Hey, it's Steve from Objects Unlimited. In this video series, we're gonna talk about five different types of 3D printing technologies. Color jet printing is a technology that was developed by Z Corp that was later purchased by 3D Systems. The way that it works is we use a, a, a base powder, it's a sandstone type of powder, and we inject a binding agent into it via 2D inkjet print heads. So great benefits to this technology. Number one, it's pretty fast. Number two, it's very cost effective because we can hollow the parts. We can hollow the parts and recover all the powder that we don't use for production, which keeps the material cost down uh, quite a bit. Number three, you get excellent, vivid, full colors. Amazing technology for making figurines, for making uh, food samples and other marketing assets. Where it's not good, it's not great for engineering parts, tolerances are not there, and the parts aren't uh, super strong. It's an, a printer made for artistic applications and something uh, that we love using. So multi-jet printing, um, known by a different uh, term polyjet printing from different manufacturers, is the process of spitting small molecules of material onto a build plate and then curing it immediately with UV light. Excellent process for very high detail. You can slice at a really thin uh, resolution and you can get extremely accurate uh, small features. Uh, very useful technology for medical devices, for high accuracy props, um, for prototyping of complex instruments. We use it sometimes where internal channels are required or for features that no other technology can handle. The beautiful thing about the 3D Systems ProTech 2500 platform is that the support material is, is steam removable. We put the parts in a steam bath, we melt away all the support material, there is no residual interface and we're able to clear supports through all internal channels and all internal features. Phenomenal product, it's great for jewelry, it's great for medical devices, um, many applications where you have small, high detail features and you need to make some strong and accurate parts. So fused deposition modeling, FDM, is also known as FFF or fused filament fabrication. Personally, I call this the hot glue gun method where you melt a filament, you extrude the filament through a tube and you strategically place it. It's what most people think of when they think of 3D printing and in fact, that's where the industry term or the trademark term 3D printing came from was to describe FFF or FDM technology. Uh, great way to make larger parts. It can be quite inexpensive uh, for some materials, quite expensive for others. And one thing that I love about FDM technology or FFF technology is the variety of materials that are available. In our shop here, we have at least 60 different materials that we run on uh, specifically our Intamsis printers, which are open source and allow us uh, to experiment with temperature, build chamber temperature, build plate temperature. Um, once, it, if it's in a filament, we can run it and that opens up a huge array of possibilities. Um, we do love FDM printing for making large objects as well because the material cost over a significant volume is quite a lot less than other technologies that are available. Uh, FFF does ha have some limitations. So number one is slice height. You can't slice below 100 microns and often we're slicing at two, three or 400 microns uh, just to save time. Time is the other downside of FDM printing. It's not unusual at Objects Unlimited for us to run parts that are 70 to 100 hours. It's a really long time to run a printer for. Uh, definitely failures in that a uh, lot of those long prints uh, are quite costly in terms of time in terms of money. Not that that's always the case, but uh, longer prints are a problem. Getting very fine uh, detailed features can also be a challenge using FFF. There's just uh, too many restrictions on the material itself. So stereolithography is the process of curing a photosensitive resin uh, with a laser. So there's actually three methodologies we use today. One is stereolithography where a laser traces each individual shape and the other two methods are DLP or LCD projection where a projector projects uh, the entire shape of each layer uh, through a membrane and cures the material. So where this method works great is for parts that have a lot of negative space. In additive manufacturing, filling negative space can be very costly in terms of time and material. Because we're printing in a liquid, we're able to use a uh, simple support post to hold those negative spaces. Uh, we use very little support to build material ratio. On multi-jet printing, for example, it's often two to one, two parts support per one part of model material. And in SLA DLP or uh, LCD printing, we're typically running at 4% to one, so 0 0.04. Uh, to one versus two to one. Saves a lot of money. It's also an extremely fast process. Uh, we can print parts in an hour that could take up to 10 hours using other technologies. We find it to be incredibly uh, repeatable. And with the 3D Systems Figure 4 platform, 
Uh, many different materials are available that can meet most of the needs that our customers have. So SLS, also known as selective laser sintering, is a process of melting a fine powder uh, with lasers. In our operation, we tend to use a 30 watt laser that's melting nylon and PA12. There are many other options available. What this gives you is very strong parts. Uh, 3D printed parts tend to be like this. Injection molded polymers tend to be like this, but fusing these together with heat uh, makes those layers extremely strong. So when we're looking at end use per production, uh, SLS is our number one choice. The other beautiful benefit is that it's a powder technology and powder is self-supporting. So we can stack parts, we can nest parts, and we can get very efficient uh, build volumes and run a lot of parts in a short period of time. We often see SLS to use for small parts that maybe take five or six hours on an FDM process and you need a hundred of them, which we can run overnight using SLS. Many factors to consider when you're selecting a material for your uh, additive manufacturing application. Not all materials work with all machines and not all materials are appropriate for all applications. One thing that we certainly pay a lot of attention to is biocompatibility. If you're making a product for a medical application, even for testing, it should be at a minimum USP class six uh, biocompatible for incidental skin contact uh, just for safety. There are certain materials that don't perform well in chemical environments. There are certain materials that don't perform well in heat above, say, 70 or 80 degrees Celsius. So if you need a high performing material, that needs to be understood before you purchase your part or before you purchase your machine is to understand the whole gamut of, of what you're using, what materials are available, what they are capable of, and also how you have to handle and post-process those materials because that can be a significant factor as well. One thing that happens frequently here at Objects Unlimited is people email us or call us and say, I wanna make this part. And yes, we can take geometry and we can print it on whatever will make it look the best. But what's important for us to make sure that we make the best part possible for our customer is to understand where it's gonna be used. First and foremost, is anybody going to touch it or put it in their mouth or have it against their skin? We wanna make sure we use a biocompatible material. We wanna make sure the part is durable. We wanna make sure that it fits your needs. And when we ask questions about the application, it's to make sure that we understand uh, what you're doing so that we can give you the best solution possible. At Objects Unlimited, we're a professional 3D printing service bureau. We're here to answer your questions. If you have something that you need to produce and you're not sure what the right material, what the right technology is, what the right approach is, please give us a call or email us at Objects Unlimited.